Yeah, welcome. It looks like we still have some people Thank getting you. on. So we're going to give it a few more minutes um, just to get as many. We did have this as like our highest registration, our pre-registration. So we're really excited. Uh, everyone is anxious about this wonderful class. Um, it's going to be fun. I hope I can show you all some fun new tricks or see how I use it and see if it helps you. So, yeah. And we are recording this, so um, this will be available for replay and um, anything that you guys might want to use. And we just ask that you um, leave all your questions in the chat box just to start. And if you have anybody, um, any questions, either Sam or Brandy is there to answer them during the chat. And if it's something they don't have, um, we can throw that question to Perry. But we really wanted to uh, not make this too long of a class. We do want to make it pretty, pretty simple and concise. And my name is Corrine. If you guys haven't met me, I am in the CEO and founder of Details Flowers. So I do welcome you to this wonderful first presentation of the year. We know it's a really um, great subject matter because we all have uh, the holidays approaching and Valentine's Day is a really great holiday to uh, maximize and diversify yourself. So if you're only doing events, this might be a great way to uh, implement the new fun Valentine's Day. And I did want to mention that in two weeks, we're going to host a second class um, that uh, Perry is going to review uh, collections and just neat ways to organize all of your items so that you can get your events um, really organized for this next coming season. But um, yeah, Perry and I have been friends for a long while now, and she is what I consider one of Detail's super users. And she really does some things that I think are really fantastic. And of course the software was made for creative. So it's really fun to see how people are using the site and maximizing like all of the potential possibilities with it. So um, I'm really glad to have Perry here as the super user and please ask, ask away any questions because she definitely um, has used this to its full capacity. And if there's not something that Perry knows, we should be able to help too. Yeah, which well, that will probably happen. So <laughs> I always think I know it. And then I run into something and I went, oh, wait, I know I, I know there, or I've asked it before and I could remember it. So yeah. it's always great to have y'all there to back me up. So this is great. Well, yeah. thank you guys for having me. Um, and I want to say thanks to everyone for joining in this because um, it's uh, forced me to like put on makeup and put on real clothes because I don't know about you guys, but this COVID thing is kind of like, oh, I can just run around in my sweats all day and never, you know, put on makeup. So it was kind of great to force me out of that little, you know, bad place and get into a place where I was excited to see people and show you guys some new things. So um, I wanted to, I'm going to really dive in. I'm going to share my screen with you in a second, but I just wanted to say one thing is that, you know, I've been, um, it, so the, just so you know, I've been in the industry for 32 plus years. I've owned my own business for 32 of the 36 years. I've been in, actually probably longer than that. But anyway, I've owned my own business for that amount of time. So everything that I'm showing you and that I will show you are is tried and true, uh, true recipes that I've used before that, I'm very, that I was very profitable for, um, with on Valentine's Day and Mother's Day and other holidays. So um, I, I, it's not like I just made this up for this. I literally took historical information from my system, um, you know, from my files, if, if you will. And when, once I started using details, I poured it into this. And let me tell you, like, I'm not doing retail anymore, but if I was, I would be super jammed and excited because every year you will build on what you've done in this year and it will just make your life so much easier. So thanks Kareem for details for doing that for all of us. So I'm gonna jump in and share my screen and I hope that it's the right screen that I'm sharing with you. So you guys let me know if you see basically current 16, 11 inquiry, is that good? Yes. All yes. right. So basically the very first thing that I, I talked to you guys about this in the blog, the very first thing you need to do when you start thinking about Valentine's Day is approximate, uh, approximate your sales, your total sales. Like you, if you have historical information on that, of course, that's going to make it easy. I mean, if you know what your sales were for the past 10 years or even five years or three years, you will have some history to look at to gauge what it's going to be. Now, the interesting thing is this Valentine's is on a Sunday. Um, but we listened to a great webinar the other day with Paul Goodman at SAF, and he called it the COVID effect, which I loved because it gave it an interesting name. But 
that the concept being that this Valentine's will probably, um, you will see more sales than you would normally see because people are um, not able to communicate in the way they normally communicate. So uh, they're gonna communicate with flowers even more so than they normally would. So let's say that last year was a, you know, it was a Saturday Valentine's day. That's usually a pretty good day. Normally Sunday wouldn't be as good and you might wanna drop your numbers on your total sales for what you're projecting. But with the COVID effect in place, go ahead and just use your numbers from last year. For the sake of the worksheet that I'm gonna show you guys that I worked on, I just used a number of 20,000. That's what I was gonna go for. So you'll see that in a minute once we get into it, okay? Um, so once you've got that number, you got it written down on a piece of paper, maybe you've got it set beside you, just kind of keep there. You're gonna create a client inside your um, project. It's called, I, I don't pay attention to this, but called Valentine's 2021. Um, this is what I named it since I'm using it. Um, so this is not like your normal because it's not one person, right? It's you're using this as your client is the entire holiday. So kind of look at it that way. And you're going to use this worksheet to project your numbers of items you're going to produce, the recipes that you're going to use, the quantities on all of your items, right? So um, really quickly, know this, and I'm sure you guys get it. Like, I'm not even gonna talk about the proposal in this. This come, the, the proposal doesn't even come into effect when you're using uh, details to work a holiday concept like this. So really what we're gonna be working in is we're gonna be working inside the worksheet. We're gonna be working inside costs, the cost tab, and then we'll be looking at the documents at the very end. So, so you've created your client, you've named it uh, Valentine's 2021. And the next thing you're gonna do is come up with your price points, like how many, how many actual SKUs, if you will, that you're going to sell. I'm gonna tell you that this is tried and true. Years for years, for probably 10 or 15 years of my 30 plus years, I would do 12, 15 different arrangements. The year I decided to make my life easier, I didn't know it was gonna make my life so much easier. I dropped it down to seven or eight, I think the first year and that was probably 10, 12 years ago, uh, everything changed. I became more profitable. Everything became more consistent. This, everything looked the same as it went out the door. There was the, the fewer items that you um, are going to produce during a holiday, the more, you know, there's a less of a chance of you, you know, kind of throwing things together because you've really honed it in and you're really gonna pay attention to detail on just those seven to eight items. So I created seven for this holiday, if you will. You know, I give them a basic name or something. Uh, you can give them fancier names. I do like to have a name on my things that will go and line up across my social media platforms, my website, so, uh, you know, Instagram, Pinterest, whatever. Um, plus it's also great to just yell across the room to somebody, hey, we've got four more mod roses you need to produce or whatever. Um, so it's always good to have the name on something. So what you're gonna do too is make sure that you've covered yourself in your price point uh, range. You wanna start, I, I really, really, really would implore you not to do anything under 75. Um, one thing that I will say in all my years, if you will lead your customer to where you want them to go, they will absolutely follow you. The thing is, is the reason that we kind of get all wound up about, oh, but we've got to have the dozen roses with the baby's breath or whatever, is because people call and ask for that. And the reason they ask for it, it's because it's the only thing they can name. But if you gave them all these other choices and told them, oh my gosh, you need to see our signature roses or our signature tulip arrangement, they're going to follow you no matter what you say to them, they're going to follow you. So this is where I say, be the expert, be the professional, get in there and you tell people what they need. All you're really wanting to get information from them on is their price point. And that's always tricky too. That's a whole other class we can do later. Now for um, sakes of this, I didn't do the 99, 95 or, you know, those kind of price point uh, strategy strategies. Um, I'm just keeping it simple for right here. But as you can see, my lowest price point is 80. And I did um, basically two right around the $100 mark, 150, 180, 195. And then I created what I'm calling a custom arrangement down here at 270. And I can play with that custom arrangement and go up or down. Um, one of the things I would say is, I think that recipes got a bad rap. Um, 
probably due to the fact of when the, um, you know, a lot and nothing wrong with, uh, well, there's a lot, there's a few things wrong, but there's nothing wrong with the, you know, uh, the wire services. But in general, they, the, the kind of stuff that I think most of us in details, if we're event florist or wedding florist, we're probably going to be something doing designs that are a little more customized and a little more curated. And, re and uh, recipes will sometimes get a bad rap. And a recipe, a recipe doesn't have to be 12 roses, half a bunch of jib, leather leaf. That, a recipe can be absolutely gorgeous. You know that when you create them in your weddings, you create beautiful recipes. And I believe that you could do the same thing for holidays and still be profitable. So create these recipes knowing that you want to be able to recreate them. You want your designers to be able to recreate them and you want to be able to do them efficiently and profitably. So that's a lot of what we're doing here. So like I said, we've got our price points and the glory of this is remember I told you I'm wanting to keep my, um, I, I'm projecting that my sales will be 20,000. So I've got 20,000 right here by doing this, but let's just say for whatever reason, I freak out and I go, I don't think I can do 40. You can so easily go in here, manipulate your numbers and come down to something that feels a little more, you know, safe for you or whatever it is that you want to do. Um, by just changing your quantities really quick because you've already got your prices and you can go, okay, I feel better. See how quick that is. It's the loveliness of softwares that will absolutely calculate for you very quickly uh, ways to adjust up and down what you want your sales to be. So the same thing, of course, is true within your arrangements, within your um, individual recipes. So I'm gonna pull up uh, the tulip recipe for right now. So now these are all arrangements, like I said, I've used before. So I had really beautiful pictures that I had taken, um, you know, and I, that's what I strive to do every year is to come up with, you know, pictures that I could use on my website. Um, so this is, was easier for me because I already had the photo. So if you're starting from scratch, it's, it's sometimes a little hard to do this because you're just kind of, you know, throwing darts, but you can basically take some of the same, um, principles we're using here, which is figure out your price point, stay there, build your recipe and keep making sure that you're keeping inside your profitability. You're going to be golden. So on this Great. recipe, I have a question mm -hmm. just to explain. So this, in this projection, projection, you're uh, stating that you're going to sell like 30 of those uh, first designs yes. and, um, 30 of like the signature and 30 of the other and yes. only five custom arrangements. So this is yes. like what you're forecasting to sell so exactly. that you know what you'll have um, available or how your recipes will work out. Absolutely. So, and I'm going to order my flowers based on these projections, right? So I know I tend to go fast. So you, you three slow me down and ask me a question. Cause I'll just roll through stuff. That seems, I just do go so fast. So Yes. So basically the idea is I'm figuring out how many of these arrangements I'm going to make to get to the, the uh, total sales that I'm wanting to reach for that year. So um, does that answer that? I think yes, so. it does. Okay. So um, I want to show you guys this. So I have played inside this recipe several times and changed things. So the interesting thing is here is, you know, I have it set at 80, but right now the total price is at 84.75 if you calculate it up, but then it reversed, did the markup. I, I don't, I'm not saying that right. And, and Kareen or, or Samantha, I'll jump in here if this makes sense to you what happened. But basically once I started playing with the numbers and going back and forth, it's literally now showing me that I have a much higher markup, which by the way, means I have a really great margin on this arrangement. So I can sell it at 80, by the way, and be completely fine. If I change this to 80 right here, I think it will change. I hope it does. Yeah, you see how it changed my markup right there. So you can see how by manipulating the numbers in the total price, um, that will tell you, you know, it'll kind of adjust your markup up or down, if that makes any sense. One more thing with this too, is I noticed that you have a uh, tulips priced at 70 cents. And um, one thing to really pay attention to during the holidays is those prices that your wholesaler might charge you or your supplier might be um, a little higher than average. So mm -hmm. I would really suggest that you put these in there for whatever the wholesaler has confirmed that price at. 
um, so that you'll know that your your margin is really pretty spot on. Pretty yeah, solid. And that kind of goes back to look if if I'm usually shooting for a markup of three hundred and fifty percent. If I'm at three eighty seven, but my my um, tulips do go up, I'm probably still golden. That said, I literally I know these prices are prices I've gotten at Valentine's Day before, so. I, I tried to kind of be true, but I, you know, I was buying in pretty massive bulk, so in different places. So you're right. We could change that price to be more on, in line with probably what most people would pay, which might be much closer to 95 cents or something like that. Um, I want to show you, oh, show you what I did here as well. Like this picture actually shows 10 tulips that uh, of one color. The way I did this recipe, so this is something to take note of, is I actually split it into the two different colors of tulips that I really wanted to bring in for the holidays, um, just so that I could divide it up and I could sell half of them in uh, pink and half of them in orange. If you want it to be more true to what you're going to do, then you would literally, you would put in another recipe called Valentine Tulips Orange, and then name this one Valentine Tulips Pink, if that makes sense. And then you would say, okay, well, really, I'm only going to sell 15 of the pink ones and 15 of the orange ones. By, by dividing my number in the recipe, all I've done is, is done that without creating a new recipe, if that makes sense. It's just a kind of a workaround to get my numbers where I needed them to be. So let me hey, see. Hey, Carrie, so uh, we had a couple of questions. So yeah. First is actually going to be from Melissa, and mm -hmm. she's asking, can anyone share what is the markup for Valentine's or retail versus wedding and events? It's her first year doing Valentine's. Okay, so tip it, it, okay, so standard-wise, and Corrine, chime in. Well, I would say you on. typically want to work off um, the same margin as markup, you for exactly. wedding. I would say normally like a 350%. The only difference is your cost of the flowers might be higher during a holiday. So we typically suggest marking your cost of the products up about 25% during Valentine's Day because that's typically what you'll spend. But I love for you to keep your margin at 350% or higher just so that um, you're not really hurting your market or pricing yourself too low because you know it's a service, it's a holiday, and especially this one, you should maximize those sales and profits. And I think Melissa too, like the, the broader question there is, it doesn't matter that it's a holiday. This is what things cost. And this is how much your a markup is in order for you to be profitable. So everybody knows that flowers are more expensive during the holidays. So it, it, don't even like, do not even call a competitor to find out what their roses are. J just don't. It, it's like a lesson in futility. Just do your numbers and do them with the right margins and the right markups. And then you will make money because really ultimately that's what you're trying to do here. Goodness knows what we don't want you guys to do is being struggling through in a, a year as an event or, you know, wedding florist where we're not getting the work and then put you into a situation where you come in and do Valentine's and then you don't, you lose money. We don't want you to do that. So that's the whole idea. It doesn't matter that it's a holiday. Use your markups, use your pricing in, within details and you're going to be good. And, and Perry, while we just have that little break there too, we have Rue who asked um, if you could touch a bit on using those different base types. Like how are you yeah. going to be using those different bases? Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, because I had so many in here. So what I do um, when I'm, you know, kind of coming up with these recipes, like I had produced this uh, arrangement for the last two years in a moon base, but um, I was like, you know what? I might want to switch it up this year. So I literally went into um, you know, my vases and rentals and just started looking for some other containers that I thought would be a great choice in case I wanted to use that this year. So the next year, hopefully I'll take a picture of this year and next year I'll have the picture with the new vase in it. Um, it's gonna take a while to uh, load, but let's just pull this in really quick. So I'm gonna pull in the Addy base and I'm gonna show you something just exactly uh, about this too right now. So the Addy base came in. And so I'm gonna, um, we've got it in at 9.95 because that's the rental price. So 
here's the deal because because of the way we've got bases and rentals set up inside the system it's coming it's, it's being brought into your design sheet as a rental so the thing to do here is this is not a rental right you're selling you are retailing this piece most people in the industry do a keystone markup on their rental hard goods if you will so really this is going to end up being a 20 dollars vase so i'm just going to change it right here in my recipe as i've pulled it in I, I don't want to change the back end because the back end is correct. I just want to change it inside this worksheet. That, I hope that makes sense to everybody. And what this is showing is that you should change the price up at the top. So this should be like a $96 arrangement rather yeah. than that $80. So you might want to make sure you update that number. Yeah. So as you, as you add and subtract things, that's what you have to remember. I thought I would have taken off another vase, but I didn't. Um, she just put these in here as ideas of what she could use that she might like to buy so that she can either change them out or depending on if um, like accent decor didn't have the cherished vase or they didn't sold have it. it right you know she could switch it to something else and so then if i just take this back to zero my 80 is basically closer uh, in line so or 84 you could change it to whatever you need always once you start doing you know you start uh, throwing moving things around in here especially before it's time to order and do all of that you need to go back through each of your recipes and double check that this number is should be very close to what you're actually uh, charging for so that's just one of those things as you're building your proposals you're building your projects you should always get into the habit of is going back through and checking things so okay let me see where we're at so We've talked about defining our price points. Um, and we've talked about the different. Can you show how you did the delivery down at the bottom? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, so we've got all of this here. The one thing I added in because it is part of our sales and it does kind of give you a true picture of the total sales is uh, delivery. So let's say you can add as many delivery price points as you want here. Um, you could say I, for Valentine's Day, everybody's $110. I mean, everybody's $10. You can do it however you want, but this way it does kind of at least allow me to project the amount of money I'm collecting for deliveries debt, deliveries. Um, Cause it will also help you to hire delivery drivers. If you're hiring delivery drivers and you've already promised, you know, five people 200 bucks for the day or, or whatever, um, that would, that's a thousand. So good. You're still making money because you do need to make money on your deliveries, by the way, it, it, it should be a wash or definitely you should not lose money. So this is what, this is why it's good to have this number is just to know like what you could uh, project your payroll or freelance labor for delivery drivers would be. So that's good to have that there. And depending on your state, I noticed that she has um, a taxable service marks or a taxable product. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you have to, um, charge tax on your delivery, depending on the state, you may not have to, but right. uh, just something to consider that details does help you organize too. So great for projections. So this number right here, our section subtotal um, is going to come into play in a, at the end of this, when I kind of get to the cost section uh, and profitability. So remember, we're going to come back to this. So, so this is kind of the worksheet, right? I've got my recipes. I've pulled them in here. The glory of this is next year you could absolutely copy this recipe uh, and make it different. Uh, you, you, you're going to save this recipe now. It's now saved. You're going to be able to make it different next year, make a copy of it, add in, change things, do whatever. It's just giving you a really great base once you get this year going that it's going to make it so much easier. So, so that once I've done this, I've got all this done. My next thing is going to be I'm going to take myself off here. Um, going to the items used. I think that um, in talking to a lot of my friends who um, that I've helped with details over the year or two that I've been um, with details, the one thing that I see they're not using the most is this page and the cost page, which is actually kind of the really important part of the system because this is where you control your profitability, right? So this is uh, kind of really important. That what, what this is basically telling us here, here's all of our items that are being used that we've got in each arrangement. And what it's telling me is that if the number's in red, 
that means I'm off my um, total bunch count, if you will. Um, so we all know, I mean, it, sometimes you can get hydrangeas by the way it is by the stem, but most of the time you're gonna buy them in, in bunches of 10. So right here, we know that I'm not even up to a full bunch count and to make it profitable, I would need to add hydrangeas or subtract one way or the other, you wanna, you wanna be able to do that. And so the great thing about this screen is that you can literally click on that number and then it pulls up where that glowing Alps, hydr hyd glowing Alps hydrangea is being used. And it's being used in two different arrangements at this point. So what it's saying is, look, I'm under by five and that I need to order at least 40 to be profitable. So you could do a couple of things. You could literally decrease the amount that you're using or you could add another, let's do this. I'm gonna add another garden arrangement. Watch this and watch how it changes. Actually, I'm gonna add two. Do you see how all of a sudden it went from, I'm using 35 hydrangeas to now I'm 35 and now I'm in blue, meaning I am close, I'm good. I mean, if you see a blue or a green, I think that's kind of a maybe blue, maybe blue or green number, that means you're like golden. Like this is where, this is the sweet spot that you wanna be in for figuring profitability. I think that's within a 20% margin of a full bunch is when it turns gray. And when it's okay. green, it's spot on to a very even bunch is what that means. Okay, oh good, thanks for letting me know that. So the red ones are the ones that you really wanna pay attention to. So FYI, I, this is how I do it. Everybody does it differently, but I tend to, I've entered in my kind of uh, graded bunches of greenery and fillers uh, as a bunched price. That's just how I've done it for years and I wanted to keep it the same way for me. But So when you see by the bunch, this literally means 17.7 .7 bunches that I've sold of this. So I've always, when I, when I have used that system, when I've entered in my item, I'm making sure that I put by the bunch in the um, descriptions so that I know that this is 17.7 .7 bunches. So by the way, I'm not too worried about 17.7 .7 being in red here because it's a bunch price. So it's that kind of is a little different when you're looking at stuff that's by the bunch. So just know that when you see the reds on mine, it's probably uh, a lot of them have to do with the bunches. But here we've got peony coral charms, 22 burn hearts. You can see that this is where you will make your uh, changes. So I love this one. So like, look here, we've got um, monarchs and we know that we, we need to order in bunches of 10 for tulips. And honestly, probably in bunches of 200 when you're doing it like this, because that's where you get your good price breaks, right? So again, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna make this 31 because I'm still, by the way, in my way close to where I wanted to be. That gets me closer. And so the closer I can get these numbers to being in green, the more profitable I'm going to be. Um, same, yeah, Perry, go ahead. If I can just interrupt for a second. Um, so um, definitely on Perry's note that a lot of these things that are saying by the bunch is simply because she's edited the terminology of that item. So mm -hmm. details does come with all STEM counting. Um, and then just always keep in mind on that item that when you're doing your stems per bunch, you'd wanna put one and then the price to be higher to reflect the whole bunch. And then we did have um, a question from Amy, just I wanna share with everyone. Oh yes, this is nice. So under the yeah. details, you guys can see here that she put stems per bunch one and made that default cost higher as if it was the whole bunch versus a stem. And exactly. that works really great for like garland by the foot as foot. well. So every time mm -hmm. you put one or two feet. Um, and then Amy did have a question about our vases in a recipe, mm -hmm. asking if they take the markup, but they do not. So the only items in our software that actually will reflect that markup is a flower, blooms and greenery, a miscellaneous product or a hard good. All of the vases you'll notice next to it, the price matches. So like 750, 750. <clears throat> so it did not take that markup. And that's actually the price that it is to purchase it from Accent Decor. So exactly. if you were going to sell it to them, you would want to either double it or triple it, that price that would be automatically populated. And I've like fixed that. And so as I'm showing you guys, some things I've fixed as I've gone and then I've unfixed them as I'm showing you things. So Yes, remember I told you if you bring in a vase here, it's gonna come in at the cost of it. So you wanna 
mark it up appropriately, but just in the worksheet, not on, you don't want to bring up that item and change the price there. So yeah, anybody else right while I'm stopped for a minute? Okay, so let's go back to um, the items used. Um, as you can see, pretty much for the most part, everything I've got the way I want it. Like I said, the blackberry, that's cool. Tulips, hot pink, maybe we do a few more of the tulips to fix that. But as you can see, it'll change it uh, pretty quickly. So you can see right then and there how you're using it. And remember, if you want to look at where that's at, if you actually click on the little, um, what's it called, magnifying glass, it'll kind of scroll up to that recipe and then you can just open it up and see where you're using those items. And you can adjust it right here. If I adjust this to 15, you will see this tulip hot pink change. Did you see how it jumped to 631 when I changed that to 15 versus five? So, and you're probably uh, going to go back and forth with items mm -hmm. going from full bunch counts to off, depending on how you're using and manipulating these arrangements. So it might take a little bit of uh, manipulation to get exactly where you want to, but this should be a great way to project kind of if you anticipate selling. And our goal is just to help you get closest to the bunch count that you're going to need to buy or so that you know what you have coming in. And absolutely. I think honestly, one of the best um, examples of why I think this is such a great area is when you're doing wedding and event proposal. And let's say that you're using some crazy, wonderful, like that Westminster Abbey rose in just the bridal bouquet, but you're only going to put five in there. Well, guess what? You have to buy 12 of those puppies. So, and they're expensive. So if you've forgotten that as you've designed your entire event, this page will remind you that you are now way off because you've got seven more roses that at cost or $10 or whatever ridiculous price they are. You know, so that's why I think it's really important to use is to learn how to use this so that it can help you. So, okay. So let's say we've done, uh, we've got all this done. Now it's, uh, now it's time to order all of this, which is kind well, of the culmination. You, what? Yeah. I was going to say before you move off of that page, mm -hmm. um, if you, uh, once you guys get this order like completely set, or maybe it's after the fact and you know you sold 30 of these, 28 of something else, 16 of these, I would save that as a template of your 2021. And I'm not sure if everybody knows how to do this, but if you save down here at the bottom and if you change that version to template, you can now have this so that next year when you're doing your order or maybe right after this holiday, you can pull up this 2021 template and already preemptively know um, for 2022, I'm going to do less of this and more of this because everybody wanted this and I was ill prepared or I didn't have enough of those and I could have sold way more of that design. So I would say when you finish up this holiday and it's probably really a good idea to come in here and update these numbers and then save that as a template. So next year you can be ahead of the, the game. Absolutely. I mean, I think that's where the magic of this will come in. Don't you, you guys agree that the magic will be like next year. So it's kind of one of those, ooh, you got to just wait for the magic later when it just makes it so much easier for the next year and everything. So all right, so if we skip over to co the cost page, this is where you're gonna actually do all the ordering. I've kind of filled in a lot of this, but I filled it in so that I can show you a few things really quick. Um, as uh, you can see, I've already entered in my suppliers. I've entered in how much I'm gonna order. Um, and I'm not too far over. Um, I projected, let's see, 4,050. And I'm actually over by about $491. It's because um, you changed all of your counts. <laughs> yeah. And I, well, I had changed some of my numbers as I ordered. I just, I, because we all know that, yeah, I had the, or, uh, the two looks in here at 70 and they came in at 95 or whatever. So when I was putting together this uh, order, I basically assumed that I got some things cheaper, some things higher, whatever, but just so that you could get the idea but the two things I definitely want to show you inside um, the cost page is what is so great is this ability to add a second wholesaler for one item. 
So let's say that I could not get all of my, I'm gonna to go to a different, um, I can't get all of my green cymbidiums from Hilverda de Boer. I need to be able to, uh, I, buy, I call them and I go, I need 45. They go, well, we can only get you, you know, 25. So um, I've got a problem. And now all of a sudden that's in red. If I click on the plus sign and add a supplier, it adds a second line. And then here is where I can add in my second supplier and I'm going to get the remaining, uh, what is that, 10? I'm not doing math quickly here. But uh, guess what, I have to pay a little more for them, but oh well, at least I've got them all now. Um, this is like one of my favorite features to be able to do that. Um, one of the other great features is the ability to add a substitution. So let's say you call, you know, I call Cam Floor, I get my Heather from them every year and they go, yeah, it's not looking too great this year. You might want to think of something else. So I'm going to go ahead and put in that wax flower is going to be my substitute. So the way to do that is we can do that here. So let's just say the hydrangeas were, that was the deal on hydrangeas and I can't get those antique greens I have to get. So you can just type in like I'm going to get the other hydrangea, I'm going to get the, where is it? Um, well, let's just say I have to get blue, whatever. Um, so I'm going to have to substitute for blue. So from here on out, this is going to show a substitution. And this is where it shows it, which is where it's really important, is on your recipe documents that you print that you will have at your design stations and your cooler and everywhere. So this will tell people, oh, the reason you can't find those antique hydrangeas in your coolers because we couldn't get them, but you can substitute the blue and all is good. You don't have to think about the pricing or anything. It's all gonna work out for you, okay? Um, the other thing with these notes is, uh, this is where I will sometimes put like, uh, I'm gonna put a note and I will put, uh, these are arriving on February 10th uh, via FedEx. And this just gives me just, you know, like uh, if I'm trying to figure out what, what days everything's coming in, cause I want to start pre-producing things and getting things greened, just having those notes there. And if you click on it, that little notepad, that's what pulls up and tells you that. So I could literally go down through this entire page and put a note on when these things are arriving. Um, the other way to do that would be this. So the glory of this page is let's say you've got it all done. Now the way to do this is, and this is how I do it to order, is I download this entire page and it pulls up in a spreadsheet. I hope you will see this. Let's see if this pulls up for you. I don't know if it will. Oh, I don't know if you'll have to change the screen you're sharing. Yeah, I think I have to change the screen. New share. Let's see where it went. Hold on. Numbers. And not Acacia by the bunch. We really need to, um limit the uh, number of decimals <laughs> she yeah she looked to perry to make things more difficult sorry yeah no uh, so this is now you know basically the spreadsheet that shows everything that i need and so what i will do and by the way uh, this is not excel this is numbers and i'm not really great at it yet so i'm not as fast as i am um yeah, no. i'm going to delete columns that i don't need uh, just to get to make it easier to look at. Uh, I'm not even, I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to sort it. Now let's see if I can figure out how to do that in numbers. Hold on, you guys, sorry. I'm, I'm kind of new to math. How do you do this? Somebody? Well, so the, this is what she's either going to send out to um, like her team or her buyer or just check off these items as they're arriving in and just making sure your invoice matches what your wholesaler told you that you are going to pay for these. I'm a big proponent of making sure that um, the price they, they told me is what they charge me. And um, I think we all get so busy that we don't often check those invoices back. So this is just a really nice way to make sure that you're, um, you know, you're accountable and your wholesalers are staying accountable for the quoted prices. And again, you could go back into your recipes to update those prices um, for next year, should you need to adjust anything that was radically different than what you anticipated paying. Exactly. So, and this is, by the way, how I would um, I just sort it to get it to the different people I'm buying from. And that way I can then just copy and paste 
um, the portion of this spreadsheet that I need to send. And this is my order. This is how I send, this is how I do it as I pull it into the spreadsheet. And then the glory of this is remember those notes we added in to when it's going to arrive. Now, if you print this sheet, it's going to have everything that you've got coming. So this can be handed off to your, um, you know, if you've got people coming to help you just process your flowers, here's what they're going to be processing. And they need, they need to check that they got 22 bunches of this and 200 stems of this. This is the quickest way to give it to them probably is in a spreadsheet um, like this. So and so I learned something new. I didn't know that note showed up here on this export. So there you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's really great. Yeah. So I'm going to go back to, uh, let's get this down to my page. So basically that is kind of, I think, oh, okay. So here's, here's the, big, the big thing that you want to be able to look at. So remember I told you that total number we were looking at from our worksheet. So right now I've ordered uh, my projected expenses, my actual cost are 44.96. So I'm gonna take that number, 4,496. Hey Perry, we can't see your screen. Oh, you can't? Hold on. Okay, hold on, let me get to it. What happened? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe you need to reshare on your details. Yeah, let me try it again. Hold on. Let's see which one that. Okay. Can there you we see go. this? Yeah. Yes. You see me scrolling? Okay. Sorry about that. So, um, yeah. So, remember, I was talking about these numbers are going to come into play. So, I actually spent four, um, basically $4,500 on flowers, right? And I really want to double check my margins. So I'm going to take $4,500, or if you want me to be specific, I'm going to take 4496.20, and I'm going to divide by, I'm not going to divide by this number, by the way, because this has taxes and delivery into it. I'm going to go back to my worksheet really quick, um, and I am going to go down to that number at the bottom before all of that, which was 16851. And what that's telling me is that my margins are at 27%. And we all, most of you guys know, or if you don't, I'm, I'm gonna give you this little bit of advice is that, and I learned this 30 something years ago, that cost of goods should be at 33% or less. I never want it to be at 33, that seems high to me. So I'm always going to push um, for a cost of goods under 30%. So right now I'm at 27% cost of goods. That's kind of golden. That gives me room to Let's set perfect example. Let's say that this arrangement, let me get back to one of these. Um, you know, like I get those hydrangeas in and they are nowhere near that full and that lush. By having margins that are at, at a really good spot, it allows me to go, I'm just gonna have to order more product to, to make sure that it looks as full as this. That's, that's why you wanna know these numbers. So that if you do have to make adjustments, you feel solid doing it because you've looked at your numbers, you've played the numbers, you've got it all right here. So that's my tip. That's it, I'm done. Are there any questions about anything that we might have showed you today? Um, and before we do that, Perry, do you think you could run over to the document section to show how they can- um, Oh yeah, sorry. To the design team. Absolutely, sorry. This is important. So. Um, Actually, I do. I thought about it earlier going, I kind of like this executive summary page just because it really like snapshot shows you how many arrangements you're going to be producing and your numbers. So this is kind of a really great little just snapshot of the whole thing. But basically, the main thing you want are these recipe uh, PDFs. Um, these are going to be printed and put at each station, each design station as you work. Remember I told you about the possible substitutions. I love, love this feature. It's like, to me, so great. Um, I don't have to go back and fix the recipes because I couldn't get the Heather. I just put in the substitution and then there it shows up. So it's just the greatest. Uh, remember, this is telling me that I'm gonna, I've got projected that I'm gonna do 30. So you're gonna pass these out to your designers. I'm gonna always suggest Let's say that you pull in three designers. So overall, you've got four designers for the holidays to produce all these pieces. I would divide, divvy this up because you want things to look very consistent. I think that's all of our goal for holidays, especially like I don't ever want someone to send me a picture of an arrangement that I sent them that doesn't look like this. 
So I'm going to give one designer the tulips and the signatures to do, and that's all they're going to produce. Okay. And then I'm going to give the next designer the roses and the compotes to produce. I hope that makes sense too. So this again is going to create consistency that will, um, goes a long ways just for uh, having your clients kind of uh, trust you uh, because they get what they see and that's what you want. So don't forget to print um, a copy of these and put them in the little uh, clear sleeves and uh, tape them in the cooler so that when your designers walk in there, they don't have to remember all this. They can just look in the cooler, grab what they need and go from there, so. And um, I would say one other thing is if you could show uh, how to make like this wedding as a, a collection so that you oh, can yeah. go look at the okay. products. Yeah, made. because after you've done this, let's say you've done this for this year, the thing you wanna do is go and create a gallery, a collection, which we're gonna show you with that webinar is gonna be in a couple of weeks. So if you don't know about it, you wanna join us for that because collections is like the coolest new bell and whistle in the system. As far as I'm concerned, I love it so much. So these are now like what our collections are. And I'm just gonna show you colors really quick so it makes sense to you, but I've created all of these collections and what is housed inside each collection is, I'm sorry, I'm clicking too quick, are all the flowers that are green, all the flowers that are burgundy, all the flowers that are peach. So if you go back one, um, and I'm gonna go to Perry's holiday collections you know, I've got Mother's Day flowers, Valentine's flowers. You could add your Christmas collection, your Thanksgiving collection. So basically what that's going to be is all of the flowers and containers that you use for this holiday. That way, when it's time to create the new thing for next year, you've got it here already. You grab the entire collection. You go into selection mode. You select all items. And then you copy and paste that into your new project for Valentine's 2022. Did that do it? Yeah, I think that that's great. There's also a way that you can move something, um, everything that's on your design board into a new collection, which might be like a great way if you um, want to show that. Yeah, if I can remember how to do it, I'm, I'm just, all of a sudden just. Um, you're oh, gonna so if I, yeah. Step back into, I would say, go back to the holiday collections mm -hmm. button. Um, so go inside that holiday collections and then you're going to make um, a new folder or yeah. So you're going to make collection. a collection and maybe you call this Valentine's day, 2021. Got it. Yeah. I see what you're doing. Okay. And then this will put, um, once you add the collection and you can always update this with a different image, like she's done with her other ones, but, um, click add collection. It's just and then taking a minute. Once you go inside there, that folder, you can go up to the menu um, on the left of the design board. And then you're gonna add all the favorited items right there. Which like That's just the add that, here. Add here. Yep. Didn't and know that one. Love that. <laughs> that's gonna throw all those items that are were part of that design board or whatever that event was. So. Uh, just go. a great way to summarize what you did. And you can do this with each of your weddings and events so that if you have a particular theme, maybe you want to make a collection of that. So we're going to be reviewing all of that in two weeks. But um, yeah. she, as you can see, like Perry has done a really nice job of organizing um, all of her collections. So um, I didn't know that little color. trick. So that's a great new trick. <laughs> Love that. Yeah. Okay. Love hey, that. Uh, so we do have a couple of questions yeah. in the chat. Um, so Sherry is asking, what's the best way to keep track of the items you've sold or what's left in your inventory? Um, oh, so as you're yeah. selling things, well, I would say if you're bringing things in for uh, Valentine's Day specifically and you have those set aside, then I probably wouldn't add those to your inventory um, because that's mainly tracking your rentals. Um, if you do sell out from any of your rentals, then it's just a good idea to go into that particular item and um, maybe open up that Valentine's Day arrangement there and um, click on that Addy vase, for example, or the mm -hmm. moon vase. Mm -hmm. If you click on that, it will open it up and you can go up and we can see that that has 
1383 in stock from accent decor and that's as of last night so if you wanted this face you could obviously get some but if you wanted to edit this item and then um oh i'm sorry maybe click on uh, the details first i apologize that's okay so edit you could put uh how many are in your total inventory so if you're bringing some aside for Valentine's Day and you expect to sell them out, then I probably wouldn't add them to your inventory here. But say you have four that you didn't sell, you could then put that as four um, after the holiday. But um, that's probably the easiest way because it's mainly designed for you to use uh, as a rental. So something that you'll be reusing. We're not quite you were quite asking, Sherry? Does that answer your question? sure if she was um kind of focusing more on the fact that like if i projected 30 recipes okay. and maybe i only sold 20 of those versions how would i know how many were left um and brady and i were kind of chatting about some possibilities so maybe we'll have to send sherry um like a little special video some ideas we can think about um in that guard i think is what she was maybe hoping for yeah um, more along the lines of like how do you keep track of where are you like if you were doing mass production and you had several of these and you're like right now i'm the only person within my company how do if i was bringing somebody in how do we keep track granted some of that's organization on the back side of my own but is there a way in details you know we're projected 30 we've sold 15 so i still know i have that but is there a way to actually deduct that out of the cost to see like what's left does that make sense maybe that's yeah, the wrong way to ask about it well, i'm not sure because i know that it's we're using this as more like an event and this is mainly just to help you with your okay. ordering part of it so that might be a tally system that you might keep yeah. on the side or as one you get sold or however I think that but spreadsheet would do that too i mean you 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 end up creating the spreadsheet remember out of the cost page yep well that's that spreadsheets you know manipulate you can well you know me it. in spreadsheets Carrie. i know i know <laughs> you do them for would, me i, I would, don't I do them that, <laughs> i would keep that spreadsheet up and use that to tally that's how i would do it okay um, perfect. that spreadsheet would be up on my screen somewhere else and i would like start tallying every time go down however many have been produced so but perfect. samantha brandy maybe you guys could come up with another workaround that'd be great yeah, yeah i do think definitely. the cost page is a good option um i was wondering if and I'm just kind of brainstorming off the top of my head if like copying that template and opening it into a new event to say, okay, I only did four of these, but I, I still think the Excel spreadsheet is like you were mentioning, probably the best Italia as you go. Perfect. And of course, we always are taking, um, you know, feature requests or really listening to our community about what they need next. So this is just the first year that we've really been promoting details on how to do this. And I'm sure as this year goes on, we're going to get a lot of feedback on what would be a great addition. So if you think of anything or if you'd like, that's, you know, we're here as a service. So this webinar should be like a helpful addition to what your annual fees are. Um, but if we can add a feature that a lot of people are really admiring or requesting or wanting, and it's an easy um, like addition and not too long, we'll definitely add that, you know. We want to make this really useful. If you guys don't know where this request feature is at, it's basically uh, under the menu here. You go to support, contact us. This comes up and then you go right here to this little box and you do request a feature. This is my biggest hint to you guys too. Like they don't know what we want unless we tell them. So, you know, we're going to say, uh, don't, I'm not going to submit it. But anyway, this is where you're going to do it and you hit submit. <laughs> Terry has like a hundred requests in there. No, I do. Uh, yeah, sorry. But please, it's the only way. And we, a lot of times we'll look at what people are requesting and where we get the most requests in is that's where we need to direct our development time. So we do have full-time developers and we actually have some really fun things that are going to be coming out just based on the requests or the needs. But, um, you know, a new year brings a whole new bit of um, request. Like this last year, COVID contracts were such a big, thing and we realized that we needed to make some adjustments to our system so that it could be most user. So we got, you know, 15 requests in one day and we immediately diverted our attention to getting that, getting that accomplished. So I hope you guys uh, definitely know we're on your side and we, we, we hope it goes appreciated because we work really, really hard, but yeah. Um, yeah so 
thank Can you for all the feedback. One more, I just have one more thing to address. Um, Amy had written in earlier, I'm not sure if everyone had noticed the conversation, but she just mentioned, is there an advantage of consistency only for speed? Like when you mentioned Perry, mm -hmm. you have those seven looks and they're all very you know, consistently created because um, she likes to make hers each unique. And then we had a comment that said um, that someone else does just put a little inspiration picture and kind of sets a budget, um, but may design them differently. So I think the answer to your that. question would be, yes, I think Perry does it for this speed, but also like she mentioned, she was wowed by how profitable she was when she simplified and kind of just um recreate yeah, you will as a i don't care i listen you guys i was not doing thousands like some florists do i i was i'm still i was still an event florist you know but i was a retail florist too but so i might do 200 300 i can't remember you know arrangements and i was very a very custom people came to me because they wanted my custom stuff it doesn't mean that it's a just because it's a recipe it needs to look I mean, that's what I want to try to share with you guys is, yes, I know what you wanted to make custom. Guess what? It is custom because you spent a lot of time coming up with a really beautiful recipe that will translate every single time, right? So to me, that is custom. It's just for this holiday, I, you know, I sent it out to 20 different people, right? I guarantee you those people are not going to know that, so... Uh, um, and another be thing is at the end with making more money. So. It, you really, I think it's really important, especially on these um, holidays, is to be so profitable. So it's really important to make sure your designers have recipes to work from because they decide to put an extra rose in everybody's arrangement or two or three, you know, a little more spray roses, that's your profitability going down the drain. So it's really important, I think, to do a test run of your holidays know what you're going to get those pieces to look like, what you want to sell. And those are the seven to 10 arrangements that you put on your website and start promoting. So I would suggest as soon as this holiday um, ends that you start preparing for Mother's Day and uh, get those arrangements locked in there, loaded, where do you think you're gonna sell and use the same process over and over again. And I'm sure after a bunch of repeating that it will be like a science and you'll just know if it's on a, a good day of the week, you're going to sell more um, depending on those holidays. So that's, that's like a winner. Well, I, I know. I'm just going to reiterate this again, 32 plus years. I never felt more confident about my holiday designs and my holiday sales as I did in the last five to six years when I lowered my number of SKUs and, and, did these really beautiful seven beautiful designs everything was better i got fewer complaints i mean or zero complaints for the last few years i don't think i got one complaint in the last few years so i i'm, I'm just this is 32 years of experience doing it all trying to be the custom i'll do every different valentine arrangement differently oh my gosh i just think that there's there's times to do that and that's on your events not on your weddings I, i'm not sure it's the time to do it on a holiday when you just really want to pull in some money. Sorry, and just to touch on that too, Perry, I think like you showed where you had some of those vases zeroed out, just mm -hmm. the option of maybe switching the vases, but having the same stem counts. As we all know, a thin tall vase makes a much different design than a wide mouth vase. So like you can have the same ingredients, same price, and a vase can really <laughs> change the overall look, feel, or maybe you just organize it different. Um, I know for me, sometimes I collect all the same flowers together and sometimes they're all mixed in. So yep. um, I think with Amy, that too could just be like your main inspiration, your budget and about how many you want. And then you could just kind of design each one differently as you're feeling those blooms as you're, you know. And by, exactly. I mean, Samantha, it's a perfect example. If you took these arrangements that you came up with for Valentine's Day, which I've done this, by the way, I've basically taken those same recipes and I just switched the containers out. It looks like a completely different arrangement for Mother's Day. And uh, maybe I switched the colors out. So I add in more yellows or whatever, but it's the same recipe. I just switched colors and bases yeah. and it's already there for how, you. How great is that to do variety? Maybe you pick out three mm -hmm. different same price bases from accent decor. You're going to do 12 of each of these designs. Yep. That's you know, a great then, way. You're right. I mean, that's a great way to customize it. 
So you know that when you order that this is the arrangement, you've got this so-and-so this many to sell of those designs. And this is the price point and um, steer your clients or maybe just take them off of their website. Once you tally up and they're all sold or spoken for, um, you know, it's just mixing it up. So. Yep. Ooh, good questions though. Yeah, so we're going to be doing another one of these, like we said, in two weeks. We were really excited about, um, you know, we had done so many webinars, I think, during COVID that everybody had gotten sick of webinars, and we were really sick of ourselves for a long while. So we want to get back into this because we feel like um, right before the holidays is a good time, is a good reminder, but also you need to be ready for these events that are, we're sure, are going to start booming again. Um, now that the vaccine is out. So we'll be hosting these. They're going to be free for all of our members and um, probably just a small nominal fee for those that aren't members. But this is one of the added perks of being a details member. Um, if you're not a member and you're interested in joining, we have a 15% off coupon. So um, if you fill out a survey, uh, having watched this, uh, we'll send you that coupon code. And um, everyone that attended this webinar, we're going to get your feedback on it or what we could include differently or what did we miss or what is a topic that you would really like being discussed. Um, I know we have some tax questions people have of running reports um, that we're going to do a webinar on um, when it gets closer to tax season. Um, Mother's Day we're going to do again, but also we want to help you with that organizing. And um, we do have an intake form that's coming out soon. Uh, hopefully Yay. in the next month here, we're going to have an intake form. So we're going to have a webinar about that and you'll be able to make multiple different forms for your clients. So depending on the questions that you might want to ask your brides, um, or your clients about their event, or even, um, once they've already booked you, like what is a questionnaire that you might have that specific. So we have added that, uh, custom fields you might have noticed, but that was the first step on that intake form. And, um, we're really excited about these new features. So if there's anything that you're really interested in hearing more information on, um, please let us know. Okay. Thank you, Perry, for this very informative uh, webinar. Hoping, hopefully you guys all enjoyed it. Thank you to Brandy and Samantha for also being uh, answering those questions. And if there's not any other questions, I think we will close it down. Yeah, actually, I did just want to add one more thing um, in the chat. If everyone hasn't been paying attention or if you have, um, Samantha and I have put some links to certain support center articles or videos that you can go back and rewatch. So if you want to save that chat, there's going to be a button that says file right there at the bottom of the chat. If you click that, it's going to download kind of um, an export of that chat so you can keep those links um, and revisit those as you need. Wonderful. Yeah, I'm glad. Thank, uh, thanks, Brandy and Samantha, for doing the chat. There was no way I could have kept up with that and done all this. Thank you. Our pleasure. All right, guys. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody.